morning, everybody. We're so glad that you're with us. I just want to invite you, if you're out in the uh, foyer area, to come in here in the worship center and join us. If you're online, we're glad that you're with us. We're just going to sing about the fact that Jesus Christ has paid, uh, paid the price to bring us alive from the dead. So let's sing this out, Arise My Soul. You guys are ready? Here we go. Arise my soul. Yeah. Remember this. That's good, yeah. He took my sin. Yeah. And he buried. Sing this out. No longer I who live. Come on. Now Jesus lives in me. For I was dead in sin. Yeah. But I woke up to see the light. Yeah. No, I won't boast. No longer. No longer I do live. Come on. Now Jesus lives in me. For I was dead in Come on, we got it. But I woke up. Come on, what's up? No longer I do live. Now Jesus lives in me.
special treat. The worship team here in a couple weeks, we're going to be a part of an event called Worship in the Park. It's on the 21st in Fairport. Pastor Rob's going to be leading some music and some worship there. So this morning, we have him up here to teach us one of the songs he's going to do. He's going to be helping lead the next couple weeks, getting ready for it. And we just want to teach you this song that talks about God, your love is strong. Amen. How many people can testify that his love is strong today? Amen. Yeah, it doesn't matter what we're going through. Father, we thank you that your love is so strong that even when we don't feel loved, we know that you love us. We know that you are for us. And God, we know that if you are for us, then nothing can be against us. Amen. Amen. I'm going to teach you this song. This is verse 1. Strong enough to calm the storm of fear and unbelief. Come on. Fierce enough to break the accord of death that clung to me. And I have come to know a love towers overcome every insecurity. Heaven moves and demons flee now as I lift my voice to sing. Oh, your love is strong. Come on, declare that today. Oh, your love is strong. Oh, your love is strong. Yeah. Come on, let's do verse one again. Your love is strong. Strong enough to calm the storms. Come on, let them calm the storms today. Here we go. Strong enough to calm the storm of fear and unbelief. Come on. Fierce enough. To break the accord of death that clung to me. And I have come to know a love whose powers overcome every insecurity. Heaven moves and demons flee now as I lift my voice to sing. Oh, your love is strong. Yes, it is. Oh, your love is strong. Oh, your love is strong. Oh, your love is Let's go to verse 2. Close enough to hold me near. Close enough to hold me near. Come on. When fear is crippling, safe enough to be my home when my world is crumbling and I have come to know a love stronger than the grave though in my darkest hour raise me up from dead to life now oh in resurrection power oh your love is strong Oh, your love is strong. Come on, it's strong today. Oh, your love will never let me go, Jesus. Oh, your love is strong. Let's do it again. Your love is strong. Oh, your love is strong. Oh, your love is strong. Oh, your love is strong. Strong. Come on, I need your help on this part. Your love. Here we go. Come on. He set you free today. Let's do that again. Your love. Your love. Your love. Vanquished all my enemies. Broke the case that silenced me. Set this song. 
Come on. He's put a new song in your mouth today. Come on. And I'll sing. I will sing for all the love you give me. Hey. Rejoice because you chose me. So this Come on, let's declare it today. Your love is strong. Come on. Oh, your love is strong. Come on. Oh, your love is strong. Come on. Oh, your love is strong. Yeah. Oh, your love is strong. Let's do it again. Your love is strong. Come on, declare that. Oh, your love is strong. Oh, your love is strong. Come on. Oh, your love is strong. Let's do it again. Your love. Come on, here we go. Oh, your love is strong. Your love. Here we go. it down your love let me hear you sing it today your love church come on I was with silence but no longer come on set this songbird free he's put a new song in my heart today and I'll sing come on Time your love. Here we go. Your love. Come on, church. Come on, his love is invading. Come on, let his love invade every space today. Just for a second, listen, your love. Come on. Your love vanquished all Come on, church. Come on. He's not letting us leave this moment. Come on. I'm free today because of his love. Let's do it again. Your, your love. Here we go. Your love. Come on. Some of you are starting to believe it. Come on. Vanquished Come on, some of you are starting to believe it now. Broke the chains that silenced me. Come on. Set this songbird free. I'll sing. Come on, church. And I'll sing for all the love you've given me. Rejoice because you chose. Your love, one more time. Your love. Here we go. Your love vanquished all my enemies. Hold the chains that silenced me. Come on. Set this song for free. Come on, I'll sing. Come on. Choice because you chose. 
Come on, I want to hear you sing it. One more time, your love. Let me hear you sing it out today. Your love. Come on, some of you are starting to believe it now. It's a breakthrough happening. Come on, church. Let your love be loud. Yeah. Come on. Come on. He said this song word free this morning. And I'll sing. For all the love you've given me, rejoice because you chose me. He's called this orphan home. You're a child of his today. Your love is strong. And we're going to turn it over to hope. Oh, your love is strong. Yeah. Oh, your love is strong. Come on, tell him how strong it is today. Oh, your love is strong. Oh, your love is One more strong. time, your love is strong. And oh, your love is strong. Yes, it is. Oh, your love is strong. And oh, your love is strong. Yeah. Oh, your love is strong. There we go. Yeah. Yes. Do it again, your love. Your love. Come on, church. Vanquished all my enemies. Broke the Come on, I'm free today. Go for it one more time. to pull you out of your mess today. Oh, your love is strong in my circumstance. Oh, your love is strong. Come on. 
One more time. Oh, come on, declare that right now as we get ready for Pastor Matt. Your love is strong. And oh, your love is strong. Oh, your love is strong. Yes, it is. And oh, your love is strong. And oh, your love is strong. pastors here and we are kicking off a brand new series this morning called 10,000 reasons and there's a million bazillion reasons that we should be worshiping the king of kings and the lord of lords the name above all names amen but this whole series is is about this one verse really that we have at the top of your sermon notes and by the way if you haven't got these sermon notes and you would like a copy to follow along, you can just raise your hand and Justin will come around and give you a copy of that. If you are new this morning to Celebration Church and you are visiting today, uh, we just want to say hello and we, we welcome you and we're glad that you're here. And before you leave today, we would love it. Behind every seat, there's a little card that's a connect card. And we would love it if you would just fill that out and drop it in these one of these two black boxes on your way out at the end of worship service today. And this is just a way for us to say hello, send you an email or a text to say thank you for, for worshiping here with us this morning. And we will pray for you if you have a prayer request. We would love for you to fill that out on that card. And that's online as well for you that are watching online. All right, so Psalm 34, 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be continually in my mouth. Amen. That is our theme verse for this series that we are embarking in. And today, my job is to really define what worship is in part one. In part two, Pastor Justin is going to talk about the, the why, the why behind worship. And then in part three, Pastor BJ is going to explain how uh, and the how behind worship. And so today is going to be a, a time of defining, well, what really is worship? And I want you to know right away that true worship, this is what God says, or really throughout his whole word, that true worship is really treasuring God above everything else. And I, I don't know about you, uh, but there's times in, in the week that, that sometimes things get in the way uh, of treasuring God above everything else. Amen? There's times that we put other things above the place that only God should be in. And so I believe that, and I, and I don't want to go down this rabbit hole too much today, but I believe that 2020, I, it, it, it's been a mess, right? Right? It's, I don't think there's anybody that can say 2020 has just been great. If, if there is, we'll pray for you afterwards, okay? But I was reminded of something or brought to light of something. I was talking with one of my sisters the other day who's in ministry, and she said, you know, Matt, I believe 2020, it's no coincidence that all this craziness is happening in 2020. Because in the natural, we think of 2020 vision, right? And I believe that God, this is what we talked about, that we believe that God is changing our vision. 
He's changing our vision because we have been looking at other idols. We have been worshiping other idols instead of putting God in his rightful, exalted, holy, righteous place. And so this, I, I, this is just my conjecture. We may be in a time of judgment in this country because our country over the last however many years has shifted from worshiping the true God to worshiping self, to worshiping idols, to worshiping everything under the sun but God. And so I don't think it's a coincidence that all you know what has broken loose in 2020. And so I believe this series 10,000 reasons is also to help us refocus on what is important that we have kind of put to the side, which is worshiping God. Do you know that we all worship? Do you know that we were created to worship? God created every person to worship. The question is, what are you worshiping? I don't want you to leave here today without examining your heart and asking yourself, what is it that you are worshiping? Is it your job? Is it your spouse? Is it your kids? Is it the love of money? Is it a six-pack of abs that I don't have? What is it? <clears throat> My voice may go out today because Pastor BJ had a worship meeting last night at his house, and he had this incredible fire pit that was super smoky, and I'm pretty sure I almost died of smoke inhalation. So you can pray for me today that I don't die of smoke inhalation. And I may have to drink some of this holy water up here that I pre-blessed before the meeting today. But no, we all worship. We all worship something. The, the question is, what are you worshiping? Who are you worshiping? And why are you worshiping? See, as a believer, and I'm speaking to the believers right now in the room and watching online, is that the Bible tells us that everything that we do in our Christian walk should be an act of worship. That means that when we're at our job, whether that's a stay-at-home mom or, or in a factory or wherever it is, that we should do that job as an act of worship, not to our boss, not to our co-workers, but to God. Now, some of y'all are like, I don't really like my job. But your job is a blessing. There's people out there today that don't even have a job that are trying to get a job. So your job is a blessing even if you don't like it right now. And we're supposed to do that job as an act of worship to Him. And everything we do... We should glorify God in worship. Now, that's kind of a broad sense or broad definition of worship. But today, and what this series really talks about is more specific about musical worship. So, in your notes there, the first thing that you should have filled out on the left-hand side of the page is everything that we do as a believer should glorify God. Because everything we do as a believer, should be an act of worship. And then the next thing that I want you to look at there is 1 Corinthians verse 10.31. Now this is out of the ESV translation, God's preferred version, as I like to always say. And here's what Paul says to the Corinthians. And if you don't know who Paul is, he is one of the apostles of Christ that wrote most of the New Testament, okay? And so he wrote a letter to the Corinthians, and here's what he said. He said, so whether you eat or drink or whatever, can we say whatever together? Whatever. Thank you, church. Do all, all to the glory of God. Amen. So to be specific about the definition of worship, it's really words and music, and here's the most important part of defining the kind of worship that we're talking about here, is heart attitude, the posture of your heart. See, because I can come up here in my fly, whatever color coat this is, right? Look at that. Come on, somebody. All right? 
By the way, it's hot, so I may take this thing off in a minute. But this, God doesn't care about this. He doesn't care about the shirt I have on, the jeans, the shoes. It doesn't matter how you're dressed when you walk in these doors, okay? As long as you're not revealing things you don't need to reveal, you know what I'm saying? But if you're ratted, tatted clothes, it don't matter. It doesn't matter how many tattoos you have on your body. What matters is the posture and the heart attitude of your heart. So that's where true worship starts, is it starts in the heart. And so true believers come in praising and worshiping with a heart of gladness and joy. Paul says in Colossians 3.16, this is what he says, and they're going to bring it up. He says, let the word of Christ dwell, sorry, it's that smoke inhalation. My tongue is like really thick from all that smoke. Let it dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom. What does he say? Singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with what? Thankfulness in your what? Hearts to God. This is not like a suggestion, by the way. This is a command for believers. Now, if you're not a believer, you can just ignore that today. But, but I don't want you to because you were made to worship, right? So this is important even if today you're sitting here or you're watching online. If you're not a believer, it's still important because you were actually made in God's image and you were made to worship Him. So the primary reason God calls us to come together on Sunday mornings, it's, it's not so we can look at each other's you know, clothes and we can knuckle punch each other and we can drink the great coffee or the donuts or whatever it is. He has called us to assemble and to come together as believers in Christ so that we can worship Him, so that we can glorify Him. And that's your third point on the left-hand side of the page. In fact, in the Old Testament... When his people, the Israelites, were in captivity in Exodus, this is not in, well, it is in your notes, Exodus 7, 16, God said through Moses, this is what he said to Pharaoh, he said, let my people go so that they may worship me in the desert. Because at that time, they weren't even allowed to worship God because they were under slavery, they were under control. And hey, we might be headed toward that in this country. I don't know. But see, God brings them out of captivity. He brought them out of slavery so that he could bring them in to assembly and to praise and worship and glorify his name. Amen? See, in Old Testament times, worshipers, they couldn't remain in that assembly all the time because there was no place to assemble, really. It was just out in the open. And so what God did in the Old Testament is he set up these festivals that they would have typically three times a year where all the Israelites, all the believers would come together and they would worship God and they would uh, rejoice and have food and so on and so on and so on. So it wasn't long before the Israelites, guess what they started to do? They started to worship other things besides God. Does that sound familiar? But God promised, He promised His people that that His purposes would be fulfilled, and that not just for Israel, but for all nations, and all nations would worship Him. And so again, if you move to the right side of your notes, true worship is treasuring God above everything else. And so what happens is the fulfillment of God's promise in the Old Testament happened when Jesus started to build his church. And by the way, if you're taking notes today, that started to happen in in the book of Acts. Okay, Pentecost was the real beginning uh, of the, if you will, the modern day church beginning to form. And so the worship of the New Testament began to usher in through Jesus Christ. 
and the assembly of believers to worship had begun. That's really when the church started. And so the gospel call for all of us as believers is not only to glorify God and worship God, but it's also to turn from our sin and call upon the name of the Lord. I love the way that Hebrews chapter 12 puts it. And this, this is in your notes, and they're going to bring it up. And I know we're moving fast through this, but I have a lot to cover that's not in your notes. So I know some of you are getting excited because you're like, man, we're going to be done at 11.15, but that's not going to happen. I'm sorry to crush your dreams and hopes today. The cheese dip may be a little cold. I don't know. But here's what he says as they bring it up. In, in this chapter of Hebrews, God's talking about towards the end here. He's talking about a kingdom, his kingdom that cannot be shaken. And I think this is real prophetic for the time that we're in in our country right now, really the world. That God's kingdom cannot be shaken because he is still on his throne no matter what happens in our country and around this world. And so we have to trust that he is sovereign. We have to trust that his character, we have to say yes and amen to his promises in his word. But more importantly, we have to worship. And here's what he says in Hebrews 12, 28 through 29. He says, therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Who's grateful this morning? Okay, good. At least five people are. He says, and thus let us offer to God, I highlighted this, this is important, acceptable worship. What do you think he means there by acceptable worship? Somebody said it, sincere. Sincere, That I, I would agree with that. Do you think it has something to do with how your heart is postured as well? Right? The right attitude? So he says, let it be acceptable worship. With This is, this is awesome. He says, with reverence and awe. With reverence and awe. What does that mean, reverence and awe? When you, when you look, it, has anybody been to the, the Grand Canyon before? Yeah, a lot of you. I mean, you've seen pictures of it, right? Everybody? Okay. By the way, don't take another picture of me doing this and put it on the internet. <laughs> it's like, hey, can I go to the bathroom? <laughs> Thank you, whoever did that, by the way. That was awesome. But no... When you look at the Grand Canyon, when you look at, you know, the, the geysers and the mountains, does it not stir some kind of reverence and awe inside you? Why do you think God put those things on this earth? Is it so that we would worship the mountains and the, and the, and the geysers and the Grand Canyon? Somebody said it. it. It's pointing to something. What is it pointing to? It's pointing to the Creator. And, I, and I'm here to tell you that not just, not just me, okay, but a lot of us come in to Sunday mornings where we gather and assemble and we have lost or forgotten the reverence and the awe of the Almighty Creator. And I'm just here to tell you it's, it's at every church, church building, church assembly, church gathering, and I believe it's because we need to change our vision. We've let all these outside distractions come in and take our eyes off the prize. And no, I'm not trying to rhyme. And I, and I hope that just like when I was writing this sermon, I hope this convicts your heart right now. And I don't mean that in a condemning way, but I know for a fact that there's so many times that I go throughout the day and sometimes even Sunday mornings that I have forgotten the reverence and the awe of the God who saved me from the wrath that I was supposed to get in hell. That's why when I preached on the wrath of God, I tried to make you understand that if you don't understand 
the wrath of God and what he saved you from, then how can you have reverence and awe for Jesus? And so I believe what Hebrews 12 is saying here is that reverent corporate worship is not optional. It's not optional. If you are in Christ today, it is not optional to worship your Creator. Despite how you're feeling, despite the mess, despite whatever's going on in your life, whatever season that you're in, this is a command of our Creator. Why? Because He deserves the glory. And I'll tell you a little sub to that, a little sub point, is because it's for our good. And he knows what's for our good. Do you know that they've actually done scientific research on people just like us that come in and worship God? And what they have found, okay, is that when people worship the true God, the true King, Jesus Christ, that it actually creates a release of serotonin and dopamine in the brain. Now, if you don't know what that is, that's okay. I'm going to tell you. It's neurotransmitters that actually make you feel good, happy, joyful. Is that not crazy? It's not because God is an egomaniac that he calls us to worship him. It's because it's for our own good, and he knows that. So if we choose not to be in reverence and awe of our God, we're truly cheating ourselves and we're robbing God of His glory. And God's not going to be robbed of His glory. I can promise you that. And I'm going to prove it to you here in just a minute. And so, the ultimate expression and purpose for us being here on this earth is to manifest the glory of God, the reality of heaven to earth. Do you get that this morning? I hope that you see that. That our purpose for living is to glorify God fully and enjoy Him forever. That's the beauty. That's the glory of being in heaven is that we get to be with God face to face. We get to see His full glory because right now it's veiled. But then when we are with Him in heaven... It's not about seeing Mamma and Papa. I'm sorry. That'll happen, I'm sure. But that is not the purpose of heaven. The purpose of heaven and the new earth that God is going to restore when Jesus comes back is so we have it the way it was meant to be from the beginning, like Adam and Eve with no sin, no corruption, and we are walking hand in hand with God every day. Man, I, my, my spirit groans for that. is yours this is not in your notes but in Isaiah 43 just write this down to the side Isaiah 43 6 through 7 God speaks of his sons and daughters and here's what he says he says everyone who is called by my name that means everyone that is in Christ whom I created this is the key point for my glory whom I formed and made. Ephesians 1, chapter 12. Write that down. This is what Paul says to the Ephesians. He says, We who first hoped in Christ have been destined. That means it's been determined already and appointed to live for the praise of His glory. So why was man created? God doesn't need man. God doesn't need anything. But he, we were created so that we could bring him glory and display his majesty and his grace and his mercy and his love on this earth. And so here's what I want. I believe somebody needs to know this today. That because of that, what I just said, that fact that we were created to bring him glory. That gives every life significance. 
Because I'm telling you, there's people in here today that you've been listening to the enemy speak lies in your ears and to your heart that you don't matter. And I promise you, God thinks you matter. God says you matter. Amen? And we matter not because of what we have done, but because of who we are in Him and who He created us to be. And somebody needs to hear that today. Jesus said this. He said, I've come so they may have life and life abundantly. David said, in your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand there's pleasures forevermore. And a lot of times in this culture, we think the abundant life is about money or power or prestige or fame or the trophy husband. Just saying. It's not about me. The abundant life is treasuring God above everything else. And enjoying His presence fully forever. I hope that you see that this morning. Piper, John Piper, a theologian, one of my favorite pastors, who's written a million books that I'm still trying to read. We've said it before, but this is what Piper says. It's not going to be up on your screen. He says, God is most glorified in us when we are most satisfied in Him. And I repeat that to myself over and over and over again. And there's days that I really, literally, I want it tattooed on my arm. So I remind myself of who I am in Him and what my purpose in this life is. Because there's so many things tugging at our hearts now in the news and the culture and the media that are trying to distract us from our true purpose and our true destiny. And I'm telling you right now, there's some of you in the room today, you need to shut that stuff off. You need to get it out of your life because it is corrupting your mind, it is corrupting your soul, and it is a hindrance from, that's keeping you from worshiping like you should, the true God. How many people in here ever watch cooking shows? You can raise your hand. It's okay. You don't have to be scared. Yeah, a lot of you. So when you watch these, I, I, I'm trying to give you an analogy that I hope makes sense, but when you watch these cooking shows, like my wife, Tammy, she likes to watch these, I don't know, I want to say extreme baking shows, but it, maybe that's in my mind. It's not extreme, but it's extreme for me to watch it because I could care less, but you know, the, it's the Halloween cook-off, it's the Christmas cook-off, right? And they're making all these am amazing, wonderful cakes and breads and cookies and all things that give you diabetes, right? And so, you know, the other day this hit me. We're watching these shows. I'm like, man, that looks really good. I wish I could smell that right now, right? I wish I could taste that whatever it is they made. And, and it, it hit me that, you know, you really can't taste, you can watch these shows and these foods can look amazing, but you can't smell them, you can't taste them. Like the only way that you're going to be able to do that is if you just get in your kitchen and you do it yourself, right? Right? And so, same goes with worship, right? Until you engage in corporate worship, you can't fully taste and see that the Lord is good. Yeah, you can clap on that. It's not for me, it's for Jesus. Listen, the Word of God, the Word of God is the recipe to tasting and seeing that He is good. And so you have to understand when it comes to worship, there's so many things that are intertwined with that. One of those is His Word. If you don't know who God is, how can you worship Him? If you don't know the character of God, how can you be in reverence and awe of who He is? And if you don't know who Jesus is and know what Jesus has done, how can you be in reverence and awe and in worship and praise of what He saved you from? Because if I was to ask a lot of you in this room today, if you said that you're saved, and I said, what did God save you from? Most of you would say what? 
He saved me from my sin. But guess what? God doesn't send sin to hell. He sends sinners to hell. What Jesus saved us all from, those of us that are in Christ today, is the wrath of God. That's why when I sing, your love is strong, I have to hold back. I literally had to stop singing because the words make me realize and I begin to weep and cry. And then I'm like, I can't go up there and preach like this. What is it that you're worshiping? There's one other thing that I feel like I have to cover as we get towards the end of this because I'm running out of time and I feel like it has to be covered. Is, well, let me back up. Write this in your notes. Put down Isaiah 62 5. See, the reality is, is that as we glorify God and we enjoy Him, Isaiah tells us that He rejoices over us. And man, I don't know about, about all of you, but that really just like warms my heart to know that my Creator, my Heavenly Father, rejoices over me when He sees me worship Him and praise Him. And so when we realize that God has created us to glorify Him and we begin to live that out, we begin to fulfill that purpose, that is when we begin to experience an intensity in the joy of the Lord like never before. That's when we truly start to live the tasting and seeing that God is good. And so here's the other thing that I want to clarify before we close today, because I believe that some people have this question in their mind when it comes to worship, and everything that I've been saying is talking about how we should worship God, we should glorify God. But I think some people would ask themselves, well, isn't it kind of wrong for God to seek glory for himself? Because to be honest, if, if I try to seek glory for me, for myself, that is wrong. But is it wrong for God to seek glory for ourselves or for himself? It is certainly wrong for me or you to seek glory for ourselves. But Acts 12.22, this is a story where a king named King Herod, he robbed God of his glory that he was due. And you know what happened to King Herod? He was struck down and he was killed by God because he robbed God of his glory. But when God takes glory to himself, from whom is he robbing glory? See, that's what I want you to think about. Who is he robbing glory from? Is I, I want you to think. You don't have to raise your hand or, or say it out loud, but... Just ask yourself this question, is there anyone on this planet, I'm not even going to say in this country, on this planet that deserves more glory than God does? Because He is the Creator. He made all things and He deserves all glory. The, the truth is, is that if that God didn't receive glory from all of us and all the creation in the universe, that would be a terrible, terrible mistake. And that's why in the Bible, the 24 elders in heaven, this is what they cry in Revelation. Write this in your notes. I know I'm giving you a lot. Revelation 4.11, this is what they say. They say, you, God, are worthy, our Lord God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and you, and by your will they existed and created, were created. That's why God deserves all the glory. He's always existed. There is nothing that has created God. He is sustained by himself and himself only. And so, yes, he deserves all the glory. And so when we reflect on the purpose of worship, it reminds us that God is worthy of all worship, and we are not. In fact, even the Apostle John had to be reminded of this in Revelations when an angel came before him and he, he bowed down to worship the angel. And the angel said, no, 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 no. Don't worship me. 
worship God. So it can happen even to the apostle of the apostles. It can happen to us. And the reality is, is that God is a jealous God. He tells us that in his word. He's jealous for his honor. He's jealous for his glory because he is all deserving. He says in Exodus 25, I am the Lord God and a jealous God. In Isaiah 48, 11, he says, and this is key, my glory I will not give to another. And if he truly is God, that is what he should say and do. And so we should both tremble and rejoice in reverence and awe that he is a God that will not give his glory to another. We should tremble with fear lest we rob him of glory, and we should rejoice that he is a God that seeks his own honor and glory and is jealous for it. For he is infinitely more worthy than anything he has made. And so, in closing, BJ, you can come on up, Sarah. I, I want to say, so what is, what is true worship? How do we define true worship? And actually, Jesus tells us in, in the book of Matthew that the Father is looking for true worshipers that worship in spirit and in truth. And so, number one is that True worship is when we do treasure God above everything else. True worship is when we live our lives for His glory. Not just on Sunday mornings, but every minute and every hour of every day that we have breath in our lungs and our hearts are beating, that we live for His glory. True worship is when we turn from our sin and we call upon the name of the Lord. True worship is when we enjoy God and we delight in Him. True worship is when we worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And true worship is when we value His worth and we have a right understanding of who He is and His character. True worship is when we know Him and we truly treasure Him. And so my prayer for all of us today, including myself, is this. It's Romans 12, 1. And here's, here's what it says. It says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. So maybe today through God's word, maybe you realize that you haven't been putting God in his rightful place above everything else. Maybe you realize that when you come into his house on Sunday mornings, maybe you haven't cultivated the right heart attitude. Maybe you haven't reverenced him in awe and wonder. And so as BJ and Sarah lead us in this response... I just encourage you to cry out to Him on your own, just silently in your seats. God can meet you anywhere you are. He can heal anything that you have done or haven't done or might be wanting to do that you know would take away from that true worship. So I just pray that you would just use this time to reflect and to examine your own life, examine your own heart today and ask yourself am I truly worshiping God am I putting God above everything else or are there other things in the way are there false idols in the way that I need to get rid of that I need to repent and turn to the Lord for so BJ would you would you just lead us in this song it out, church.
Jesus. Come on, reach out to heaven today. Bless his name like never before. Come on, it doesn't matter what you look like this morning. It only matters to God how your heart is to him this morning. Come on, if you want to raise your hands, raise your hands. You don't have to. Let the Spirit lead you this morning. Come on, even if you don't have a singing voice, sing out to the Lord this morning. He just wants to hear your heart this morning. He just wants to hear you glorify His name this morning. Yes, Lord. Come on. Sing it out, church. Let heaven hear you this morning. Declare His goodness. Declare His word. Declare His glory. Yes, Lord. Come on. Worship your Just a voice to sing it out. Thank you, Jesus. So bless the Yes, thank you, Jesus. Keep singing, church. Come on, let heaven hear you this morning. Let your praise be loud this morning. Worship his holy name. So bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh my soul. Worship his holy name. And as BJ keeps playing, we're just going to enter into a time of, of uh, thanksgiving. We're going to pray for our offering today. And listen, if you're a guest here today, this is mainly an offering time for our faith family unless the Holy Spirit puts it on your heart to give. And just to remind you, there's several different ways that you can give to the ministry here. And they've got that up on the screen or if you're watching online. But listen, I want you to know this... This is an offering to the Lord to be used to, to magnify His glory and to reach those in this community and around the world that don't know who the God of the Bible is. And so would you close your eyes with me as I pray for us this morning and for the offering? Father, we just thank You for Your Word. God, we just thank You for Your mercy and Your grace and Your love for, for us. God, I thank you that you called this orphan home. God, I thank you that your love is strong. And I sing for all the love that you have given me that I didn't deserve. And so, Father, I pray that you would take this offering today and that you would use it in a way that only you could use it to glorify your name to reach this city, to reach this nation. And Father, I just pray through your Holy Spirit today that you would just posture our hearts towards reverent awe and worship of you. So Father, I just thank you for what you are doing in this faith family. I pray that you are doing it in all faith families across this city. And God, we just ask you for more souls to be saved in Jesus name in Jesus name we thank you in Jesus name amen Come on. Sing it out today. Bless the Lord from the very depths of my soul. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Come on. 
And as you remain standing, I'll make it real quickly, just a little housekeeping as we close shop today. But I want to say this to you, that you will be the most miserable person on the planet if you are the object of your own faith. Man. Because you were not created to worship yourself. That's right. Amen. That's Pastor Matt was said that, right? So I want to encourage you to shift your focus to the one who is worthy to be praised and honored. As we close shop today couple of things. Number one is about the Connect card. that's in the back of every seat if you are a guest with us today. We would love to hear from you. We're not going to harass you or bother you. Just drop it in one of those black boxes to my right, your left, on the way out. That's where we put our offering as well, unless you do it electronically. The second thing is kids, if you have your little crossword puzzle there, there will be someone there out in the cafe area. We can turn that in and get a little prize. And uh, we just wanted to bless you for following along, and hopefully you learned something today. Listen, I pray that all of you had an awesome day here in worship with us today. And if you're a guest, we have a little gift for you on your way out that we're going to bless you with just for saying thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being with us. So listen, let's do something different today. As we're walking out, let's sing that again. Come on, come on let's do it again. Come on, as we're walking out. Bless, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Come on, I'm going to bless him in my car. I'm going to bless him this week at work. Come on, church. Worship his holy name. Seem like never before. Oh, my soul. Worship your holy name. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Come on, if you're watching online today, bless him. Worship your holy name. Seem like never before. Oh, my soul. I worship your holy name. Yes, Lord, we thank you. We pray that all of you have an awesome Sunday. We'll talk to you soon.